these are the Canto Aura 4s, the bigger brother to the Auras that are previously reviewed. Let's find out how the bigger brothers compare to the previous versions. This one comes with a power brick as well as a speaker connection cable which is proprietary and they've sent me some speaker stands. We'll talk about those later. First thing you'll notice is they have a wave guided design with the soft dome tweeter and I am a sucker for this type of cone. As you can see the dust cap is not visible and it just looks like one piece. Love that. The material seems to be the same type of plastic feel but it's fine. You'll notice that one of them is powered and the other one is passive. You'll notice also that there are four connections for the speaker meaning that this is bi amped which is just as a way of saying that it's an active crossover so the tweeter and the bass have their own amplifiers. Some quick things to note, they do have connections, they look like quarter 20s on the top and the bottom so there are different ways to mount this very easily. You'll notice the port in the back and as far as connections, we have an RCA input, USB-C, Bluetooth, and also a subwoofer out. The power brick itself puts out 24 volts, 3.0 amps, which gives you 72 watts of power. The included speaker cable looks pretty long, so you shouldn't have a problem putting these as far out as you want. These are the optional speaker stands you can purchase from Kanto. You may find that you want to lift them off the desk for a better bass response, and so you have that option as well. These retail for $3.99. They're called the Kanto Aura 4s because they're using a four inch woofer. I'm curious to see how these sound compared to the previous versions. You'll notice that the active speaker has to be the one on the right. I haven't found a way to switch that. The passive one has to be on the left. I prefer options where you can switch those in case you need to move the power cable or whatever reason you need. So these are meant to be listened to near field and that's what I'm doing here. The cool thing is you can actually connect it via USB-C to any phone, iPad, whatever you'd like. So the volume knob here serves several functions, obviously to turn it up and down, but also you can switch sources from Bluetooth to RCA to USB. If you hold this down, then it goes to sleep. Hold it down for two seconds again, and it turns it on. One of my pet peeves is amplifier hiss, and I don't hear anything. If this world were mine. All right, so some quick listening. I noticed that they definitely have more bass than the smaller versions. They are larger, so you can expect that. The imaging seems pretty good. You do have to back off a little bit or move them left or right to kind of get the best possible center imaging. So you'll definitely want to play with how wide you have them set. And with toe-in, I find that towing them in directly so the tweeter is pointed at my ears seems to sound the best. And as far as the treble response, I don't hear anything that sounds annoying. It just sounds pretty neutral from what I hear. This will be important if you want to use them for studio monitoring as you want a pretty neutral and accurate sound. My voice should appear to come from a single point. My location should be exact and clearly focused. So they also state that you can put them on their side. I don't know that I would recommend that because the horizontal off axis response will likely be better than the vertical off axis response, but let me try it anyway. Exact and well focused. My voice should appear to come from a single point. My location should be exact and well focused. So typically with two-way designs, you don't want to put them on their side. Because this has a waveguide, it still sounds pretty decent. So I guess you can do it. I'm sure there are some tracks that would expose why that might not be the best idea. But if it's something that you need to do, it's definitely an option. As long as the tweeter is about in line with your ear, you should get some pretty good imaging regardless. So a quick shout out for the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit, which was created by myself and Technodad. I'm using these to determine how far I should position these using the timing section. When it sounds right, the sound sounds like it's coming directly in between them and moving this slightly kind of shifts the image over to the left and right. And it's a quick way of doing a test without having to actually do measurements. So right now I want to do a test to see how low these go in room. So I'm going to use the crossover test for the front left. So they fall off about 50 hertz, which is pretty good for a speaker this size. They really start to fall off below 40 hertz. 40 hertz I can still hear, there's some audible bass, but below that 
it's pretty much silent. So you can see this is a useful way of using the spatial audio calibration toolkit. Look out for deals that we have on our Instagram, instagram.com forward slash spatial group. If you'd like to purchase this right now, you can go to spatialcd.com. All right, so before we get into some measurements, let's see how loud these can play without distortion. Okay, so it seems that they are output limited, which is not a surprise, they're small speakers, and they do have limiters to protect them. At the upper end of the volume, you can tell that the bass is kind of giving up. You hear it start to compress, and uh, yeah, it's decently loud. If you're listening to them near field, it's not a problem. If you're planning on using these somewhere where it's not near field, maybe it won't get as loud as you'd prefer, but that's what you get. So let us take some quick measurements with Magic Beans True Target. This is my app. We have an export specifically to give kind of like a spinorama style measurement. With the pro version, you can just drag and drop those directly into REW. Mainly what I'm looking at here is the on axis response. You can see that it's rising. So the treble is should be flat here. This can be EQ'd and I can tell because when I look at the in-room directivity, the response is very flat, so that's very good. The waveguide is doing what it's supposed to do. Below here, this is my room interacting, so you can kind of ignore that. This is how it sounds from a distance, so as you get further away, you can tell the treble starts to roll off a little bit, and that's what you expect. If I compare the measurement of the left and the right, they look very similar until the room starts doing its thing here. So comparing the in-room directivity in red, versus the one for the right in orange, you can see that I'm getting some reflections and that's why you get this kind of comb filtering effect here. It's going up and down the directivity of this one. But that is not the speaker itself. That's being in close proximity to this wall here. And so, yeah, overall, I'm pretty impressed with the directivity on these. That just goes to show how EQable it is. Earlier, I mentioned that I was getting bass around 50 Hertz, which you can see here. I am getting a dip based on the room response but you can see below 40 hertz, it really starts to fall off pretty steep. Here on the left speaker, you can see that treble rise. And you can tell here by the directivity that it is very EQable. So if you wanted to flatten out the treble response, that's something you could definitely do. Right here, I'm taking a look at the difference when I connect a subwoofer to the sub out. You can tell that it's applying an automatic high pass filter for the speakers, which is good because it allows them to play louder. And it's about a 24 dB per octave slope. Just estimating here. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with these Canto Aura 4s. They're small, they play pretty deep, they can get loud enough. One complaint is that the treble is a rising response, which I couldn't really tell by listening to them because it wasn't peaky, it was just nice and smooth. And near field, you won't notice that as much, but with EQ, you can definitely tame that and make them more neutral if you want because the directivity is so good. What else can I say? I think Canto makes consistently good stuff, especially their more recent stuff. I've noticed with the Aura and Aura 4, they're tuning the sound to be more neutral and I like that. So for $3.99, I'll leave a link down below. And if you're interested in seeing where they rank on the speaker leaderboard, I'll be linking to that down below. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And if you like this video, maybe check out these other ones here. So thanks for watching.